Hi, everyone. I'm here today again with Michael Horn. Thank you, Michael, so much for being with us today. Um, I, we always have so many questions for you, and you have such eloquence in answering them, and we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So today, what, what I'd like to do is ask you some of the comment questions. I thought maybe we, there are so many, but even if we could get to 10 of them, that would That's be true. great. That'd be great. And then yeah. I also want to touch upon um, future prophecies, because we are getting a lot of comments about um, not so much past predictions, but like, what am I facing next? What's what? What did Billy prophesize for us in the future? That kind of thing, and how is it going to affect us today? So I thought maybe we could handle those two topics today, if that's okay with you. Anything you want, I'll do my best. Brilliant. I give you the answers as as I know them, or you know, recall them. If I don't have a, uh, an informed response, that's what I'll probably tell you. That's wonderful. You always are as honest as can be. Okay, so um, one of the first questions that we had, and I have some of the um, listeners' names and some I don't, so forgive me, folks. Um, somebody asked, um, what's the benefit, and I'm paraphrasing some of these as well, what's the benefit of warning people about what's to come if, A, people don't care genuinely about what happens and we do nothing, and they also mentioned that it sounds like everyone is getting uh, revved up for their role in this and they're trying to discover what that is. They also, I know this sounds like a loaded question, but they also believe that who's going to help us? Is there anybody out there that's going to actually help us? Okay, so the first part, um, give me that first part again, if you would. About <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, they want to know what's the benefit in warning people um, if a people don't care, and then what's their role? They they want to okay. get ready for what's to come. Sure. Well, you know, warnings are put out because not everybody doesn't care. Um, we constantly get inquiries from people who've just found this material, for instance. I mean, there's or, or found it in the past, dismissed it, whatever. So constantly and i'm not the only one there are people that are doing you know this work with this material in different countries and all people are finding out they're learning about it considering that this case these contacts are said to have begun about 82 years ago february 3rd um it's been the most suppressed information, the most suppressed, attacked, ignored. And speaking of attacks, because people get sensitive about things, Billy Meyer has had 25 documented attempts on his life. That doesn't penetrate for most people because everything today is fable. It's sci-fi. It's imaginary. It's online. It's not. It's two-dimensional. It hasn't touched people yet people try to touch billy meyer with knives and guns and what have you and as other people have been attacked look at a, a man like you know julian assange persecuted and imprisoned by this government that has no right to do it to him apart from everything else a separate story so why would we keep on putting the information out why do you know, I was going to use the example of a weather man, a weather woman, whatever you want to call it. Why do they do the broadcast, you know, uh, if not to warn people? But unfortunately, the percentage of accuracy of any and all meteorologists compared to Meyer is down in the low single digits. So you have a source of verifiably accurate information published before events occurred there's a track record so that track record substantiates the credibility and we come forward to bring the warnings of things that have you know have been forewarned of that haven't occurred yet or that are starting to appear in our world because we actually care about life and people not about celebrity and making money and stupid things that people allow to supersede life, love, freedom, peace, harmony, family, relationships. This matters, at least to the people who'd like to have a heads up and check the information out for themselves. There's no shortage of people online saying, this is coming and that's coming and all. A lot of the people 
look at Meyer's material and try and make it their own in one way or another. A lot of the people, when they come up with their own stuff, their track records are pathetic. Nowadays, it's easier for people to say, hey, these things are coming because now, bam, 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 they're in our faces. So we do it to offer it freely, freely to people that they, that you folks out there may look into it for your own preservation, for your own education, for your own benefit in this way. That's kind of why we do it. And then the last question was about roles and this, that. See, people, I, I get emails from, the people I get the worst emails from, not even just the regular skeptics, it's the people in ufology. There is such a glut now in this topic, people, whether they want to call it UAP or UFO, of people who think because they're interested in this topic that they know anything at all about it. And so when they hear me, carry on and do my thing and uh, criticizing UFO experts and other people who don't know anything either, by the way, and I'm glad to cover that. Um, they get very upset about it. They don't realize, they don't go to even to ask, well, what do you mean I don't know anything about it? I've had people, I, I got one yesterday, an email from somebody talking about, I'm a contactee and a communicator with it. I said, what's your evidence? They said, what do you mean by evidence? I said, you're making claims. You're a contactee. Uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, I have people that have been with me when we've seen stuff in the sky and in my dreams. And I said, oh, wait a minute, please. So this is entertainment for people, whether they use it to scare themselves, to feel self-important, whatever. If you walked into a physics class and you start talking about, I know all the laws of physics, and I mean, People scratch their heads. That's why this whole, I've said for the longest time, ufology is the least scientific, the least credible field because it attracts and allows people that know nothing, that muddy up the waters, that are only in it for this self-aggrandizement. So when we come back to this question, what's my role? What do you think your role is, ladies and gentlemen, in your own life? What is your role in your life when you're presented with something that sounds a little harsh and that isn't sugar-coated and isn't intended to make you run by everything? Oh, yes, we have books and we have films. That's not what I spend my time doing. If you're interested, you can find the best information you will ever find. But you have to be interested enough in life, the capital L, and your own capital L life. And the, what are you here for? just to consume garbage online and to run around with a phone in your hand. I mean, I'm sorry, folks, but we are facing events that are unprecedented in human history. And we can get into what's coming. And then you can decide, why? What do I do? What's my role? There's nobody coming to save you, me, or anybody else here. Humankind has made these problems, these disastrous things for ourselves. We will either solve these problems ourselves sooner, later, or we won't solve them and we will literally be sent back to a very primitive time to try and do it all over and come up again as a species. No, not sci-fi, reality, but that's hidden from you. We don't even in this country get most of the real news in the world, what's really going on in other countries, because after all, we're number one, and that's the illusion that is pumped out of people. So naturally, your favorite sports team or your favorite this or that is number one, and it's all irrelevant to your life. So there's something to throw darts at if you folks want, but we're, we're tired of trying to, well, maybe if you just let, no, what's your life about? You want whatever this has to offer for you? Basically, it's freely given. This man for 82 years, since a boy, has been involved with this meeting, according to this material, you can determine for yourself human beings from another star system, not to entertain himself, not to entertain you, but because of the very times we are in and entering ever more deeply into. Very well said, Michael. Very well said. 
And it's true. I think a lot of us are looking for what our role is. And that was just a, a great answer. Uh, someone mentioned today uh, the username Turbo BMR brought up a good point. He said that with all the latest tech and cameras and videos, why doesn't Billy take new images and new video to help us believe even deeper? Now, you see, that's the problem. The answer is right there. The tech is better today. It means that, look, uh, they are now making, uh, you know, deep fakes of politicians, movie stars, maybe other less prominent people. Billy Meyer was told in 1981, okay, that's the end of the photo ops. You know. Well, why is that? Because this is the advent of the computer age. And your, you know, your evidence now, your photographs, your films, your videos, all taken with pre-digital equipment, people are going to be attacking that and saying it's all hoax. Forget it. When the computers come in, you think this is what's coming to you is bad? You didn't, wouldn't have a chance because they're going, oh, I can do that with a computer. But they can't duplicate what he's done with the analog, with the, the basic primitive photographic equipment and technology. And it's not meant to convince people. This is the problem. I get these emails too. Well, I want to you convince me that, no, I'm not here to convince you. I may be impassioned and passionate and for some people offensive because I have enough evidence in my own life of 45 years of studying, of, of taking the time and trouble to go to Switzerland 22 times to interview this man, to try to trick him, to make films, all this stuff, just to see what's the substance. I want to be close. I've had seven sightings, three, their craft, the rest, who knows what it is. Unimportant. No convincing. Either people learn to think for themselves or they fall by the wayside and it's going to be a bad wayside, a very bad wayside. There's no guarantees from here on out. People that are studying this material, they're not guaranteed no consequences from all that happens in life. It just means you have a better chance of being able to know yourself, to think, to reason, to navigate intelligently, not through the filters of the crap that comes at you through the useless media, not through any belief system, not through any politics. You, me, we have to think for ourselves, make our own decisions. One thing that Billy Meyer said that I don't think is quite arguable, every human being is the smith the forger of their own destiny. No ETs, God, saints, saviors, what have you, angels floating around. No evidence for that, folks. At real evidence? Yeah, just get get a, let's say, international or European or, or you know, foreign country-based news thing. Al Jazeera, you know, Reuters, sure, they fit, still filter, but find out what's actually going on that this country has initiated and we're all being sucked into it's very unpleasant think for yourself and then if you're interested you can meet online with people once a month there's an online meeting free no leaders telling you what you should think people discussing the material and the material in light of geopolitical events that are unfolding diseases different things it's all in this material free nobody's running around there you got to buy this book. No, you don't have to do a damn thing. That's up to you to decide. Excellent answer. Excellent. Someone also mentioned a few people. Uh, they had trouble believing that these uh, extraterrestrials, um, the Plarans, are human and they look human and can breathe oxygen on the planet. They wanted to know if you could clarify more on that. Like, why mm -hmm. do they look exactly like we do? Well, because they're human beings, the universe, not our solar system, not our local area, the universe is teeming with human life in different forms, different sizes, colors, all this stuff. And right now, folks, you know, we have a, a gallery and people have seen the, the, the illustrations of these people. They're people, they're human beings. They're a very ancient race. They've had space travel for eons and eons. And right now, it might sound, you know, strange for me to say it, but it's unimportant to your survival. Sure, books with photographs, you can see illustrations of the people, blah, blah. 
This is to get you to just pay attention, get curious. The UFO part, that's the eye candy that got it. So many people, wow, it really is the, the origin of the whole major UFO controversy, even though they suppress and censor the Meyer material. That's where it started with the fantastic photos and stuff. But then we learn about the extraterrestrials. You know, you, we don't have a reference point for what a spaceship should look like from another world. Oh, that, that doesn't look like... Sit down, go to the back of the room. And they look like they can't be human. Okay, here. Now that we've seen the UFO photos, we've seen illustrations of these people. Now put that aside and start seeing, reading, learning, testing what they've been saying. Determine thereby if the information has proven to a scientific and legal standard to be true, maybe, just maybe, there's a reason to go a little deeper, to continue to study, to think through and see what might make sense. Forget about the people. You're never going to meet 99.9% .9 of the authors of all the books in the world, living or dead. doesn't matter. Forget about them. You can read about people and all that's great. Can you utilize intelligently that which it has been presented by any of these sources? That's the question. It's up to you. Forget the rest of it. Events are coming. You're not going to be able to sit around and say, I don't. Who cares? Let's mm. get on with it if we want to uh, kind of survive and thrive. That's my very subjective opinion. Very good, very good. Um, what about, people are asking about um, reptilians and dumbs, cryptids, that kind of thing. Where do, where do they fit? They're all confused. They want to know they what- be con They're confused as long as they start focusing on that crap. Frankly, you can't do anything. First of all, according to Billy Meyer, reptilians, all this stuff in ufology, but reptilians, mm -mm, not here, don't exist here. He has met amphibioid, um, amphibioid type people people who kind of have and and you know look somewhat you could say a combination like a frog like or something human forms but not not what we're familiar with in our human races here on earth so what now get past it folks how long have you guys been sitting around wondering about evil aliens and reptilians and dracos and all the garbage you couldn't do a damn thing with if it was real? Dumbs, deep underground. Okay, sure, they exist. You're not going to be in one when the crap hits the fan. Unless you've built something in your own backyard and may or may not be worth worrying about in the greater scheme of things. You can't do anything about things now that the citizens of this country didn't and haven't done anything about for a couple hundred years, letting the most cynical, psychopathic, greedy, power-hungry, and violence and aggression pro human beings ascend to positions of power, voting for these idiots and letting them know. And now you're worried about what they're doing? Duh. And an election's coming up. And you're going to have the choice between dumbs and dumbser, whoever they elect. I'm sorry. If you don't get it on the left, that you've got somebody sitting in there who has continued policies of selling you and this country out. How did people vote for this guy? Couldn't you tell this was a, a, a snake oil salesman long ago? And on the other side of the aisle? Okay. People say, well, he, this guy's, he's the one who's going to make America great. No single individual, and, and Biden didn't single-handedly screw everybody, all the people that are in that train. And the, the um, assumed opponent here, and Biden may not even be the guy running, it could be Newsom or somebody else, but whatever. Really? Don't you get that whatever you like about that person's policies, that's very nice, that he's only in it for himself? Can you really not get it? And with all the legal things where there's smoke, there's fire, even if a fraction of that stuff is true, what kind of character 
does that person have? What kind of things do they say about how they're going to punish and get even with everybody? Really, really. Billy Meyer hasn't gone out to punish and get even with people because they've been targeting him for death. Now, if you if you want to go vote for any of these clowns, go ahead, but maybe mm, reserve most of your time and energy not for waving flags and letting these people do it again because they will do it again to you one way or the other. We've got civil wars coming to this. Oh, coming? Oh, no, Mike. They're, we're sort of already in. You mean like Meyer started warning about in 81 and 87? Gosh. And people that worry about UFOs and reptilians. This is why this field is pathetic. The field itself. Yeah, sure. They're talking about it on Tucker Carlson, but he won't talk about this. Because this is too scary for them because it's real. They want to still talk about the garbage. We did shows with Tucker Carlson and Redacted. Combined viewership now is almost at a, a million, 500,000 for three shows. He's referring to Meyer's material and other stuff. Okay. People getting it here and there. And Carol Ann gives this opportunity. And you know that people are interested in this phenomenon, but we're trying to get something across. She makes the thing. So let's have the hard questions. Let's have the, the complaints and the attacks and, and see if we can't clear some things up for people who want to think. If you want to come back after me, you know, me in, in, in this seat, I'm saying forget about UFOs and reptilians and, and the garbage of ufology and UAP and, and phony government hearings and all the so-called UFO experts who among and between them do not have one single piece of evidence verifiably of extraterrestrial manufacture made by any extraterrestrial. If you can grasp that, then the bad news is you've been wasting your time on that crap. Very well said. Um, there's a few people also who mentioned that these aliens are not really aliens, but they're demonic in nature, fallen yeah. angels and whatnot. I thought okay. maybe we could clear this up once and for all. Sure. Demons didn't exist until human beings created them in their religions, Eastern and Western religions. They create these demons. Ever seen it? A tangible? I don't mean, have you hallucinated and seen demons? I mean, demons? What is that? UFOs, people see, the, they don't even know what they are. I mean, not everything that's unidentified comes from outer space. It's a whole other thing. So demons, right? They're demons from outer space. So what kind of mush was pounded into your poor head when it was young and empty and could have been enlightened by good parenting and good education so that you'd know to discern that just because a book says something doesn't make it true? And some realities only exist in books that were written long, long ago by people living only in one particular part of this whole planet. And those books got rewritten, redacted, edited, changed. And, and today people spout the same thing. Now, look, that being said, people are free to believe anything they want to believe in. But when you bring that forward as a standard, as a reference, well, you know, I, you know, I've had people say, say to me, well, these are just, you know, demonic entities. So, uh, you know, slap, 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 slap me first, and then may I slap you too? What are you talking about? Get, get that gunk out of your head. You are faced with things. Are you, you get on... Some bad traffic. Are demons in the car? Oh, it's a demon is driving that car recklessly. I, I couldn't avoid it, Your Honor, because the demon pulled his car right in front of me. Oh, oh okay. Well, demons, well, we, we all know those are real, right? So it won't change any, it, you know, my take on it will not change anybody. If, if you believe in anything, that means you just don't know. I, I don't, I try not to believe in anything. I don't know lots of stuff. We are all ignorant about certain things. Some people indeed are also stupid. That means they're willfully ignorant by virtue of the fact that they want to resist or deny or avoid things deliberately and stay in a state 
whereby they only have denial or beliefs that contradict evidence that if they decided to not be stupid about it, they would no longer be ignorant because they'd look into it and could form informed opinions. So I know I carry on about this stuff because folks, <laughs> all right, I've said it is a crazy world out there, but look, things that don't exist don't exist. If you can prove they exist and you don't just hold up a book to say, well, it says in here that it's fine. Every religion, every major kind of quasi-modern, uh, mainstream Judeo-Christianity, Eastern religion, they all re rest on that in inadmissible, illogical premise. What's written in this book is true because this book says it's true. Well, you, you walk in a kindergarten with that, you get thrown out, let alone a court of law. So hopefully, I mean, nobody's you know, uh, wondering what my position is, but I really hope you folks get out of that stuff. And if not, to just have a nice day and drive carefully. <laughs> That's good. Um, Billy uh, stated that he traveled back and met with Jesus, right? No. Uh, one, okay, just he, one of our, No, go he ahead. He claims that he met with a man named Emmanuel, who was the real man named Jesus. First, this is, and let me tell you right away. There's a lot of stuff in this case I can't prove. I can't prove that claim that he traveled back to meet Emmanuel. Now, um, I think there are certain things that he has predicted based on time travel where he claims that these things will happen with certainty. And when they happen, you go, well, how could he have known that? He didn't have the equipment, the technology. It hadn't happened yet. And he says, well, I was shown these by my teachers. They took me forward in time. They took me backward in time. You don't have, don't, don't worry about that, folks. If someone says, well, did he really, he claims he met, geez. The first thing is, and this will also offend people, but why? Anybody that can send me, make it one, two, three, really one, actual biographies written, at a contempt by a contemporary, someone living 2,000 years ago. And there are tons of biographies written about people who lived even before that. So don't worry about it. Libraries are full of biographies, Romans and Greeks and Egyptians. One verifiable biography, not a religious book, the Bible says, deep sea scroll. No, no, a biography. There's a guy living around here. His name is Jesus Christ. Nobody has ever produced, presented a biography it says there's a man named Jesus Christ who lives here and he does these things. Everything was written after the time referred to. There is a book called the Talmud Emmanuel. It is, it rep, it's represented as the original true writings of the man named Emmanuel falsely claimed Jesus. Now consider something. Isaiah 7.14 and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Think about Matthew one twenty three, And his name shall be called Emmanuel. Not Jesus. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, in one place in each, there might be another place, but at least in one place in each, it slipped through the censors, the people who tried to destroy the truth thousands of years ago and create a false personality based on a real man who was crucified. He survived the crucifixion. There's a whole bunch of information. He died later as a human being does. He was in India at that time, according to that information. Should you believe that? No. You read it. You start, you know, there, there was a man named James Deardorff, a professor uh, meteorology, Comparative Religion, Oregon State University. He heard about this book, the Talmud Emanuel, that was originally published by Meyer Beck. Well, he, he, he they found these scrolls in Old Jerusalem, 1963. I think it's 1970 that the first German translation comes out. Later, towards 1990, 
The English comes out. James Deardorff finds it says, aha, another Bible hoax. Let me get myself and I'll debunk this thing. And a year and a half or two later, he comes out with his book, Celestial Teachings. And in it, he says, uh, this Talmud Emmanuel resolves over 350 inconsistencies in the book of Matthew. It's the original writing on which the book of Matthew is based. So there's things here that most people, I guarantee if, you know, most of you folks, if you're not already familiar with this guy, you don't know anything about that. So when B Billy Meyer says, well, I was brought back in time and I met this man, Emmanuel, and it was prior to the crucifixion, but what can you do with it? Let's just be honest. It doesn't mean it's true and it doesn't mean it's not true. If you read the Talmud of Emmanuel and you start reading what is attributed, supposedly actually spoken by this man, you go, oh, that sure, sure as hell makes a lot more sense than some guys floating up into the sky afterwards. And, and Okay. So, you see, that's a sac sacrilege to a lot of people because the institutionalized religion in the West is pretty much Judeo-Christianity. And you know, Islam is coming on strong too, folks. There's lots of problems coming here for a lot of reasons. Hmm. But if you, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to believe anything, you're better off. You can study and then think through things and say, wait a minute. Yeah, that makes sense. That's better. Mm, not that. And then you're a free human being. You're a free human being. So Billy Meyer can't prove, can't prove a lot of those went back into the past statements, except when we know that he's published information supposedly gained in the past about the future and it comes true unfailingly good good some people are also struggling with the concept um you had mentioned we we talked about that there's no such thing as karma really to speak of and and there was a lot of comments about that people believe in karma and dharma i guess and they want yeah. to they want to get some clarification on that um if there's no karma is there reincarnation? And if there's, okay. if there's, okay, let's, let's cover that first. Those are good. So karma doesn't, I'm going to say this once people understand, according to the information in this case, according to my understanding, and you can do your own research. Karma doesn't exist. You don't get born into a life, assuming or reborn, you know, we'll clarify that in a moment, with this burden on you from what you did in a previous life that you don't remember, of course. So where did people get the idea that they are burdened by it? They believe in this karma idea that originated where? Eastern religions. I mean, there's so many beliefs and then people adopt them and that's been I mean, shoved into new age belief systems, which have some really wacky stuff in them. Pardon me. So, well, wait a minute. If there's no karma, I mean, people, there's these bad people and they do these bad things and they don't get punished? Well, there's something called the law of cause and effect. And in that sense, and in every sense, in the laws of physics, it's the law of physics. We've talked about this before, the law of the pendulum. What goes out comes back. Well, that person wasn't punished. We are looking at other people's lives. And we're trying to determine whether they've been punished or rewarded for their, it, it doesn't work that way. Who's going to look at your life and know what you've been punished supposedly or rewarded for? Meyer says, look, we, we punish ourselves through our actions, or we, if you want to say, bless or enrich ourselves through them. When you study the teaching in this case, which is the core, the foundation, not the UFOs, not the ETs, the teaching. It's a re non-religious, belief-free teaching. A book? Well, you just said a minute ago, books? Yeah. You don't believe what's in a book. You If it's a, a teaching book, then you are responsible for applying the teaching. Maybe you want to learn how to fix computers or cars or to grow a garden or recipes, anything. You get information. It's pretty neutral, really. It'll tell you. Da, 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 and if you do this, this should be the result. 
you did that. Did you get the result? Okay, well, did you do it wrong? Or wait a minute, I keep doing these things in this book and it's never right. Well, then it's not a good teaching, is it? What if you study something that teaches you things, then you apply them and you start to notice that you, your life improves. There's something coming alive in you that wasn't happening before. There's an inner freedom. There's happiness. There's joy. There's love and peace and freedom. I don't mean that you start running down the street throwing flower petals everywhere. Most of the good things that we really make our own in life, we don't need to throw around. Billy's often said, if you start to learn things and you want to teach, teach by example. Don't run around suddenly thinking you're the big teacher and all that stuff. It means... There are people, you know, those of us that study this material, we talk about it. We're not the, the masters. and the We're people sharing and trying to live it as best we can. Now, you're going to say, well, I'm looking at this guy, and he's all agitated. He gets mad about stuff. He can't be a good teacher. Well, I, I could certainly be. Right now, I'm in, you know, when I'm in that mode, I'm embodying my genuine thoughts and feelings about things in a world that I'd like to make better now, when I do things like making films or writing articles or stuff, we're more neutral, more informative. And I could be more neutral in these presentations because neutrality is valued. If we had true neutrality in the world, we wouldn't now be literally on the doorstep of a third world war, which will be a nuclear, chemical, biological, AI war as it progresses. Not tomorrow, it's getting there. And it will destroy our country. It will destroy other countries. And we will have to rebuild and do those things. So if I'm not as neutral as I know I kind of should be about some things, it's because I kind of know that there are things that if maybe if I was more neutral, you'd, you'd get better. Like, okay, um, you know, we're pretty uh, screwed here. <laughs> I mean, you know. That's that's the truth too. But we want to be able to not get into places of trying to convince and look for outside saviors and all this stuff. When you study a good teaching, a teaching that was brought by a man named Emmanuel, as it was brought by people named Enoch, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and even Muhammad, who was not someone who married nine-year-old girls, we have been bombarded with the crappiest revisions of history and the truth. So it's no wonder people are confused and they run after make-believe stuff. This is really about us and our self-responsibility. What are we going to do to educate ourselves and to try now to make something good out of the mess that we are uh, kind of in? Well said, we are in a mess. <laughs> Um, someone also asked about uh, UFO abductions, and they said um, there's been documented surgical implants that have been removed. Yep. Um, they they want to know about that. And also they mentioned about hypnosis that so many people, I know hypnosis is not really an exact science, but they mentioned, um, what about all this external proof? Can you speak okay. to that? So um, implants and abductions. According to the information in this case, the majority where there have been any actual abductions or mutilations of people or animals, those are usually done by secret military. It's done to terrify people, to gain the control over their thoughts and their emotions and get them confused and fearful. Have there been any abductions, contact examinations, whatever you want to call it, by extraterrestrial entities? Yes, there have been some. According to this information, very, very few that have that origin. And the the ones that they referred to, they said there had been some, and the beings are very scientifically oriented, they're examining, and they did certain hypnosis or, you know, messed a little bit to keep the person from having an awareness or a memory of it, but not in all cases were the memories blocked. So that thing has been blown out of proportion and created the phony field of hypnotic regression for abductees and contactees and experiencers and all the other nonsense terms people want to apply to themselves 
so they can feel important, special, persecuted, whatever the hell it is. You cannot get accurate regression memories for things that are not part and parcel of an accessible part of our consciousness. Because we this thing about reincarnation, we kind of glossed over that part of it. So this is where reincarnation can also come in a little bit. There is a term called the soul. It actually refers to this area of the body where the solar plexus is. There is a plexus of nerves and all the emotions, personality elements are kind of based here, kind of quasi-physically, energetically, you know. That's a temporary aspect of the human being. There's no soul travel. There's no soul groups. There's no oversouls. There is an eternal immortal part of us in this teaching that is located deep within the center of the brain brain i think it's called superior colliculus that is the human spirit or the human creation energy piece part piece of creation of the universe that's immortal eternal it's not a personality it's not us in the way we think of ourselves so if there's truly reincarnation uh, does the soul come back no the soul is dissolving when we die, when, when the spirit, the creation energy, leaves the body, it doesn't come back in. And at that point, this psyche, this part around the solar plexus, is starting to dissolve, if you will, with all of the content and information from the personality, the thoughts, the feelings, all, that's being taken up in a, in a part of us that isn't our personality, that will be recreated and reformed as a new personality comes in the next incarnation that'll be a new incarnation new personality but it'll be a reincarnation of that creation energy spirit form so when it comes in it's not um approachable and uh, how would you say apprehend handable if it's the word, by our, uh, you know, still primitive hypnotic processes and all. Much of what we get when we get hypnotic regression, especially in these days with all of this junk about UFO, extraterrestrial, floating around, all that, people think that they are all sorts of things. They're remembering their past lives. Meyer has a whole book on this that, believe me, if you are interested, rebirth, reincarnation, living and that that book, will take you through that and you'll start to see why, oh no, I'm afraid that's not really what's going on there. Now, that being said, in the trillions of people that have lived, you know, we have billions on earth now and there's trillions that have lived over time. There's a few handfuls of children or people that have come forward that for some kind of a reason, that information penetrates through. It's not that they, that they got it from hypnotic regression. They, they really... Remember, and this happens seemingly to some degree, I think in India may have the highest incidence, but there's people in the U.S. Like a young boy says, hey, I was a fighter pilot over there, Dad. Said, what? what the heck? Kid's nine years old. And by the time he hits puberty, that's all gone, doesn't remember a damn thing. But there are people that get these glimmers. Now, sometimes Myers said the funny part is that when people are young and still a lot of things forming, a child can also, or a young person, can pick up on somebody else's past life, think it's their own. This is far more deep. And you want to read about reincarnation, rebirth. We have that book. You can go to my blog, get get into the bookstore, write me an email, whatever you want. And you can find out. It just seems like it makes sense to you. So these hypnotic regressions make some therapists rich. There's, there's too little there, maybe. Somebody occasionally can elicit some accurate information. They can th then go and get it. But we don't always know that a person hasn't picked up that information somewhere else. So it's best, really, you can study this, and it's very interesting, and it can be important to understand how reincarnation does work, how the new personality is here to learn and comes in clean, unburdened by what the previous personality did or didn't do. This means, forget it, you're now responsible for this life and everything in it. That's enough. 
if we really could remember previous lives, we'd never get anywhere in this one. I guarantee you start thinking about the husband, the wife, the lover, the child, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, the murderer, the murdered person, the, your previous personality had all this stuff. We, we'd be just frozen. Life itself, the creational wisdom protects us from that. It's not until farther down many, 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 many future lives that we could begin to even be available to handle such information. Even the play are, and they don't, some do have access to that. They're, they're very old, you know, their spirit forms have existed for a long time. They've had many, many, many incarnations. They might have that knowledge, but it's living in the here and now. If I over talk this, it's just so we don't get lost in all this stuff that leaves you with an empty plate and an empty stomach and sometimes an empty head. True. And karma is such a, you know, a like a lot of people believe in, in karma and you hear it just from ordinary people talking about it. So that really yeah. makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the things people are confused about too, is if, if um, we're intentionally brought here on this planet, the billions of us that there are, how can there be an overpopulation problem if our creator or whoever you want to call it put us here intentionally and we have souls and so how can that be a mistake and be okay. an overpopulation problem well let's let's look at it let's just quickly grab something else we are here however people want to decide that human life you know it came here or exists here whatever. And Meyer writes a brilliant book on the origin of all things, including creation, the universe itself. It's pretty mind-boggling stuff. No beliefs. But we're here. Mm, did this presumed creation, creator, whatever, uh, decide that we should kill each other? That we should be vegetarians, meat eaters? Or uh, are there certain things that we, we have free will about, but that there is good and not so good, good and evil, good and bad, whatever you call it, and that there are things that human beings are, in a way, given as, as an opportunity to aspire towards and for, in terms of good values, in terms of love and peace and freedom, harmony, cooperation. So there may also be certain things in life and nature that we should use our intelligence to observe, learn from, and heed. For instance, in most of nature, certainly before we did get overpopulated, and we can talk about that, you saw animal species and birds and insects. And all. For the most part, things self-regulate in nature when they live in harmony with nature. Instead, we had a belief system in which, in one of the books, they said, well, go forth and multiply. And nobody ever questioned, well, when do we stop? Is there such a thing as too much? So we have to, we do have, you know, intellects in there to develop. When we see and learn and finally realize and grasp that the water we're drinking is poisoned, the air is poisoned, the soil is poisoned, the food is deficient, if not poisoned, and most food has huge amounts of toxins in it. How did that happen that we are unable to, now, that we're living in a poisoned environment? If you don't think so, um, we have information you can read from all sorts of sources. You don't even have to come to our site. We live in a mess. Take an aquarium or what's called a terrarium. It's a big neck. It's usually a glass bowl. It's got earth in it. And there's you can put little plants in there and stuff. You could even make a little pond. You put some little tiny creatures in and just keep on putting these things in there. Keep putting plants in there, little creatures and everything. And watch, put fish, more fish, stick more fish in the damn aquarium. And watch what happens. It dies off. Why is that happening? Shouldn't everything thrive infinitely on and in an infinite? Well, it isn't an infinite space. The planet isn't infinite. It's a ball. There's a given amount of Earth, you know, land. Oh, well, there's plenty for everybody to live. Mm, uh, you know what? There's not all that much arable land because morons have paved over everything. Oops, that's us, human beings. 
We build stadiums for people to sit around and watch other people play games. We build dams that trap water and imbalance the tectonic plate structure. The, the mega quakes that are coming, you watch and see places where quakes didn't exist before, you'll find that they're starting to become closer to dams. They're in places where oil and natural gas and mining has been going on, and Meyer predicted it decades ago, and scientists did start to corrupt. I mean, this isn't stuff that's made up by people to, you know, take away our freedoms. We're taking away our freedoms. We elect completely incompetent, degenerate human beings as leaders with bad policies. We forget about it. We let them do whatever they want. We let people run roughshod over us. So when you put too much stuff any place, you start to imbalance and kill things off. That's, you now have 10, almost 10 billion people on the planet. It'll probably hit 10 billion by 2029. And what the player would say is when you hit the 10 billion mark, you start to go into one of those, uh, what do they call them? Extinction events. Things get real bad environmentally. And all those people that said it's nonsense because they just wanted to milk every dollar out of whatever they could make or sell, those people start realizing that life's getting bad for them too. This sounds like a soapbox thing, but folks, Billy Meyer since the 40s and 50s has been warning about unnatural man-made climate change, global warming, ozone destruction, and he's been right on everything. And he said the core problem for humankind, we keep on breathing. We don't stop. We never give ourselves enough space. We're living on top of each other more and more and more. Take a look at photographs of Hong Kong, Shanghai, Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago. You think that's the way human beings are supposed to live? Well, we've always lived there. Yeah. Okay. Well, take a trip out in nature. Watch Look at the creatures that still are there, that remain, and that still live in a more natural way, if you can find them. Watch some good documentaries. This ain't natural. And we are doing it by too many people, too much demand on the environment, too much manufacturing, inadequate disposal. No, you can no longer, the planet no longer can process and renew everything. That's what's said in this case. So if you don't think that's true, that's fine. But there's why they're concerned about overpopulation. When do people start trying to figure that out? Then who is responsible for the bringing of these souls onto the planet? If it's not a creator, are we just reincarnating ourselves impulsively? Where are all these? Okay, well, but... If you're talking about, you know, again, they don't use the term souls, human beings, inspirited, if you want to be. Okay, inspirited. Human beings arise naturally on a certain number, a small number, but there are throughout the universe of planets. When that planet in its own evolution from a, the gaseous state, you know, it's solidifying and then certain things are appearing and Water appears or is brought to the planet, microorganisms. You have little things growing here and you have things growing there and then plants and animals and then human beings appear. That's part of the natural creationally given process. But when people die, like if no one was, you know, procreating, mm -hmm. and, and this has happened time and time again, natural disasters, uh, wars, what have you, people's mm -hmm. die off. But right. uh, there are, since there are so many people on the planet, so many different belief systems, so many numbers, whatever, people, of course, have the urge to procreate, and they do. And so when a, person, when a procreation takes place, a human spirit on the 21st day comes into the embryo, and you now have the fetus forming, 21st day heart starts to beat. If we really logically, scientifically looked at all this, we wouldn't even have the polarity about abortion. Billy was asked, he asked them about it actually, and they said, well, we know that on the 21st day, we're human beings. 
the 21st day, that spirit form, that creation energy part piece comes to the embryo, which is not a human being then. Until then, the human spirit, the heart starts to be. We don't perform abortion after that time. Like in the rarest of circumstances would we do it. If it's necessitated for the health of the mother, if there's a deformity, we can tell in advance our technology. You, you, you have technology. It's getting better and better. There's going to be a tremendous handicap deformity. Before the 21st day, you no, know, that's not a human being yet. We know that people have beliefs and they've been taught. Huh? You know, there's a, there's a little, that's, there is a human being, and not quite yet. There are there are gradations, but in absolutist thinking, when you have very fundamental thinking or, and or fundamentalist thinking, then people get attached to a rigid thing. But our science doesn't recognize this yet. I wrote a song about this, by the way, years ago, too. It's just like, if we got it, we wouldn't demonize people. We certainly wouldn't allow late-term abortions. That's murder. And yet there can be an, a time when there's a very hard choice. An otherwise healthy mother now is, is going to die if she gives. These are hard choices. It isn't always cut and dry. They say, yes, that's when the life form is human. And we do everything in our world possible to make sure that all that time leading to it, so that, that now the the mother is carrying a human being, and that is a human being. We don't furiously run around aborting them. This, these are growing pains yet to come to our society. We're in some bad ones because we have legislation. We have pros and cons about things that we don't know. We have belief systems where people can become very righteous about this and that. Some of the right, some of each side is right and each side is wrong. That's the, the irony of the abortion issue. Yes. Sometimes the people who are absolute, no abortion ever, sometimes they're right. As are the people who say there are circumstances and times. Right. Yeah. So it's hard. But area. Yeah. We could love each other a lot more and try to understand and get to truth instead of demonizing each other. There are times to say no about any number of things, but that's part of this mm -hmm. thing. Great. All right, we have about 20 minutes left, so let's get on to some of the uh, questions about future prophecies. A lot of people want to know, um, they they have read a lot of Billy Myers' past prophecies, uh, very intriguing and uh, very believable, in my opinion, and they want to know what Billy has to say about future prophecies and how they are going to affect us. So if you want to take a few of them, Michael, and uh, kind of give us, sure. you know, his overview, that would be great. Well, look, uh, I'll, I'll do this as an oblique thing, because I'm going to be putting out a blog where I'm, I've put out a couple of blogs uh, that pertain to Billy's information about uh, World War III. And years and years ago, Billy mentioned something about, it goes back to events taking uh, in the Falkland Islands. I, I think they're off the coast of Argentina or something. I'm not a great geographer guy. There was a uh, invasion of the Falcons, a war there between UK and I guess Argentina. And you know, I am remiss for not having all the details in my head. But but and I, you know, I went, well, why why would that be have anything to do with World War III? In 1982, Billy gave an interview when he was still doing things in English because he could speak more fluent, you know, English years ago. He's had many injuries and different things, including damaged a part of the brain with speech thing, a lot of stuff. So he gave a, a pretty fluent, although he made a couple of mistakes in there, but he gave a pretty fluent uh, interview. And in there, the guy pushes him towards the end of the interview. I have the recording them online. What about a third world war, Billy? And Billy says, yes, that's going to happen with certainty. And the guy says, what? Certainty? Really? Um, you know, do you want to tell who's involved, what countries? Billy said, well, I don't know if it is helpful to people to know. And he said, well, you let us decide that. We want to know. The guy was good. So Billy says, yes, there's certain countries. He said, well, the guy says, well, it's starting the east, starting the west. He says, it will start in the east. He's starting in the west. It'll be in the north and south. Okay. He's, he says, well, is Russia going to attack America? He says, well, first. And he starts talking and he says, 
he mentions the Falklands. And then he m mentions Russia. And he's not saying Soviet Union in 82. He's talking, saying Russia. It's a very interesting distinction. But he says Russia will attack England. And then the other countries involved will be countries like smaller countries, Iran, Iraq, and Israel. Oh, boy. So I saw something a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, again, about the Falklands, and I did a uh, blog about it. Then yesterday, somebody sent me information, said, "I just keep me anonymous, but I think you want to see this. And I just started to look at it. I didn't even have time to read it all. But he shows where, you know, Meyer had published some more specific information about the connection between the UK attack a war on Argentina and the Third World War connected to the Falklands. And then the information, he has a couple links. I, I'm going to, you know, I didn't, before we met today, I didn't get to it, but I saw some some of the information that apparently the UK, the commandos that were involved in the Falklands, they also, some of those same commandos from the British, uh, you know, let's say uh, special forces, whatever, were involved in the Iraq War and the war in Afghanistan and also the Arctic, mm. where we know that um, certain things are going on. And now, just within days of that, Finland has stirred up some stuff about Russia. And in the 1981 and 87 Henoch prophecies, Russia is going to attack Finland and Sweden and Norway, countries that had been up until recently in neutral, you know, neutrality, no hassles with Russia. But it's in, he published it it's in a book that was actually published in 91 from these documents that were published in 81. So to get back to that question, it's pretty damn clear that we're heading down that slippery slope as these other countries step up to play their long predicted stupid roles in bringing a nuclear fire to the world. And what does Billy say is actually behind that? Underneath all that? The US and NATO promote, promoting and provoking these wars and this dead end war for our country dead end for this country and for a few others unfortunately as well so people are going to say well you know um how will that affect me and i'm going to go uh, figure it out <laughs> figure it out read the prophecies for yourself on my blog he spells out russia u.s talks about the weaponry that didn't exist in 87. We didn't have laser by, and, and you know, uh, these biological chemical weapons, these at that time, and we didn't have AI, the computer controlled weapons. He foretells these in 87. People, that's why if I go nuts about, forget about UFOs and extraterrestrials, get to the teachings so you can start to think and see maybe we're, oh, gee, I really have been on the wrong track about that, haven't I? Not about a specific political, just your thinking. Now, if we stay, if we go into a place of just fear about this, because we're not sugarcoating it, you know, up until fairly recently, we we're talking a little less, you know, specifically about these things are coming, they're, frick, they're here now. If you can't see what's going on, with the moron in chief, they're, they they want to push a war with you know Iran and Iraq. And remember, Billy said there, there's going to be war with them. And I said I, I've got a thing up. I filmed it 2006, 2007, an interview for the film we've got. Where Billy, I, I quote Billy said, you know, if we attack Iran, more than likely China and Russia will attack our country. That doesn't mean that they, oh they attacked Iran and tomorrow they've attacked it. It means that's going to come sequentially in these prophecies and predictions we're we're having a a global financial crash too they're pushing mired 2006 i've got a video up talking about what billy told me about it 2017 he said cashless you know the ban on cash is coming 
They're going to just try to screw everybody, control them through these this uh, formaldehyde featured guy walking around. Uh, what's his name? Klaus Schwab. And the WHO is coming. They're going to want to control every human being in every country, biochipping all this stuff. Now, am I peddling doom and gloom? People ask, "What are we? What's coming? And what do you do?" Environmental destruction, like we've never seen that. We ain't seen nothing yet. The mega quakes, the things, the volcanic eruptions coming, you'll be seeing big time. I mean, we're all seeing some of them, but the ones coming to Italy and Indonesia, there's things coming, folks. So it's not to scare you and to sell books. It's to say, look, this man and these people for 82 years have been trying to give us a through a labor of love to a thankless world with people that try to shoot this man or kill him with other forms over and over and and skeptics attacking and wanting to tell oh, he's I mean the lowest of low, and they're always anonymous people who don't have a face and don't have a real name because they're cowards mm -hmm. and they're angry and they're and they're snipes and they they're resentful and they add nothing to life there's one guy and he's been on your side thank you I think you've flushed him for the most part now this guy lives to do this and very possibly he's being supported he's a neo-nazi he's in europe a lot of the time and uh for the amount of time that he spends online attacking wherever he can our this material maybe he's being funded by some folks that uh, really are angry that you're going to learn about this and maybe do something to to improve and and further your own life in a nice peaceful way and join up with other people who are doing that in this country and other countries, you can meet with other people online. If you want to, you can participate on my blog. There's other blog. Good golly. That's a Get great idea. You know, yeah, I'm sorry. It could go on forever trying to answer that. No, no, but... no. That was perfect. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll be sure to put a link to that PDF file you sent me to with all the newspaper clippings and very comprehensive, really good for folks to read. Um, someone also mentioned that it's a little confusing to know where to begin when they get to they fly. Um, where, where would you, yeah, where would you recommend someone sure. to begin? Well, we have a search engine. And one of the things about this material is Meyer and these people, the play RN people, have spoken about, written about just about anything you can think of. What are you interested in? What are you interested in? This isn't just, well, UFOs, you, you, we have the beam ship gallery. You can see UFO photos to the Costco and home. I can show you, you know, we've got videos and films, but again, it's the, what interests you? Do you want to know about the true history of the United States in great detail that you'll never get in an American history book where you realize that for 200 plus years, this agenda of hegemony and destroying other people and, and, and raping their lands and their peoples and, and, and possessing it for ourselves not me but that's been in the works for a long time okay maybe you don't want to know about that i don't blame you maybe you want to know about the environmental information or uh you know geopolitical things maybe you want to know about the disease covid and the true facts about it that meyer started to publish in 1947 when he was 10 years I old i read that yeah pretty startling isn't it very startling we have published in English from day one, basically, the most accurate COVID information and vaccine information before any other official discovery or publication. Our blog, we said, we called this not as a theory, as a fact, pandemic, asymptomatic spreaders, children spread, all this stuff. February. Even the vaccine stuff, right? Yes. Billy, Billy talked about that too. So the best thing for folks to do is just go to your your blog and just search for whatever's interesting them. And send me an email if you can't find it, or ask a question in the blog. Yeah, we have yeah. two thousand plus articles. You're gonna find something to talk about. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Is there anything we can do? Is this uh, future written in stone according to Billy? Is parts there of it. Parts of it. Okay. Parts of it are written in stone. Yeah. Some may still be not so firmly written in stone, and some parts are still changeable somewhat. And here's the thing. Look, folks, you know, people go, where can I, where can I, 
you can be safe or unsafe almost anywhere. That's why this teaching is so important because there's a book, it's called The Might of the Thoughts. If anybody would say to me, what book should I you know, start with? You know, I've got all these books here. I'm going to start grabbing. The Might of the Thoughts is just the best. From in, It's like kindergarten to master's level because you no, know, you can read and reread this book and it starts clearing your head. You learn how to proceed with certain things, how your life can indeed be made better through your application of basic, simple things. It's, there are things we cannot change. It's gone past the point of no return. Yeah. Did Billy write a book called Light Years? Because um, I, if I remember, did he? No, Light Years, which we're giving away for free on the blog now. It's right there, I, one of the newest blogs I put out, it's free. You can download it. Someone mentioned to... they read that and they found it incredible. Very, very yeah. informational. It's a great book. It was written by an author who was a skeptic. He was assigned the topic. Billy Meyer case, go you know, write about this, interview these people. And he interviewed a bunch of different experts, scientific experts, uh, physicists, aerospace, all this stuff. And he they gave him quotes and he made sure that they signed off. All mm -hmm. these people were saying basically, it's authentic. You don't hear about it. Why? Because the idiots that push this UAP and worrying about stupid government hearings. They want to be important. They want to chase after phenomena. Forget it, folks. You can read what these experts said. You can look at the analyses. It's all there. But now we're moving to the point of, okay, get your fill of, okay, you can now prove the Meyer case is authentic. Okay, it's real. Now what do I do? Mm. It's real. What do we do? Now where can they find light years? Just search in the search engine. Go to my blog and you can put a search term in there, but it's within the last couple, you know, we have a front page, homepage where you've got different, you know, yesterday, today, yesterday, day before. Just go and first search for the term light years. And then you probably should get the blog. It'll be right on that homepage. And it, say, it says there, get this book free. Click here. I'll and find it. Click I'll find it. it. Yeah, I'll put a link. So folks we don't profit from it. We're just giving it away. <laughs> Somebody, I contacted the publisher. They never wrote me back. So we just are linking to a place online where you can get the book for free. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm, I'm glad we touched upon some of the prophecy. We're going to have to follow up on that as well um, because people are, of course, are asking more questions about that. But um, I want to thank you so much because we answered a lot of listener questions in, in great detail if and, you have any more you want to touch on now, a, a couple, that's fine with me. If you don't, that's fine too. No, I, I appreciate it. Um, as far as the prophecies go, is there anything else other than the catastrophic war that's to be? Is there okay. anything else that Billy deemed very urgent for us to know at this time? Well, you remember, prophecies are generally warnings of negative events mm -hmm. that if we, the people of Earth, take self-responsibility and go, well, how can I help? What can I do? Well, nowadays, I do get people writing me a lot. What can I do? How can I help? Okay, here's a suggestion. What about this? But it's up to each person to decide. So when you have these prophecies, and they are upsetting, the predictions, of course, are more upsetting if we say to people, look, there's some things that aren't our fault particularly or that we can do anything about, like, Objects coming from outer space, you know, that it might hit the planet, even though there may be reasons for that. But there is one coming. You can't you and I can't do anything if the scientists would just take the advice that Billy and the player started to give in 81 when they were the first to warn about it. Our scientists would come together and instead of spending all their time trying to destroy our, you know, our supposed enemies and all this, we would come together to deflect it in the meantime. What we realize is if we can begin to learn how to think, we would understand this is important. Thoughts lead to feelings. Feelings give rise to other thoughts and then to actions or inactions. It's that simple a process. That's a given for all human beings. We don't know, number one, that we're thinking a lot of time. And we oftentimes don't know what the heck we're thinking. So with the teaching, 
these books help us to learn how to know how to know that we're thinking how to control our thinking how to realize the connection between the thoughts and the feelings see because look we do a show like this and if people only come away frightened that's not it that means that they just took in those thoughts and they went right away to feelings of fear and contraction we're warning you just like we're saying hey the weather said, you know, says flooding over here and don't drive or get to high ground. Oh, I'm afraid. Well, do something. Use your brain, right? So we're trying to say to people, look, yeah, this is reality. We've learned to see things as they are. A lot of things ain't pleasant. Well, there's, well, what do I do now? Settle down. Get something. Start to learn to think. Even if you don't get a book like this. Just pay attention. Write the, As soon as you have a thought, write it down. Look at it. I'm thinking that. How do I feel about that? Start to know what you are doing consciously and unconsciously. That is the key to your liberation. And it's a process. It's not an overnight fix. We don't have any of those left. Now we deal with things as they are. We learn to see things as they are. And we make informed intelligent decisions as best we can and link up with other people at various stages of doing the same thing you want to do you want to come together you want to know you want fellowship whether you find it in a group that's a church group a study group of this or that but then you have to always not fall into a pattern of what any group thinks of what's to push you to but see if you find kindred you know human personalities who are looking a little deeper so go outside of the comfort zone so it's the best i can do because we want prosperity for people we want it for ourselves we want people to survive and to thrive and to help offer virtually everything except you know the stuff that's been published by people who paid to publish it or make films with we charge for it. Why not? <laughs> because I do my work voluntarily otherwise, and so do other people. So help yourselves out to whatever works for you. Exactly. So what book do you recommend um, a beginner to pick up out of Billy Myers' collection? I would say the book is called The Might of the Thoughts. Let me just quickly see if I have a copy. I usually have one here. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah. Coming at you here. One second. This is the older um, paperback version. It's now in a nice, oh, actually, I could have gone over it. We have it in hard copy, but it's called The Might of the Thoughts. Oops, it's always hard for me to get that straight. Ooh, I think yeah. if you hold it directly in front of you, it'll probably. Oh, okay, you thank out. you. I'm a, yeah, I'm an, there you oh, go. look at that. You might be able to make that out down here. The might of the thoughts. Get it up here. There we go. The might of the, the thoughts. Of the thought. Okay. Right? So that is a powerful book. There's something about every time, you know what? I can open this book up anywhere in there and I'm going to find something, you know, oh, geez, yeah. Be it's not, he does not use words that don't have meaning and he doesn't use fancy language. We understand. In English, you know, this book was originally in German. It's on one side. The other side of the pages are all in English. It's easy to, you know, to start anywhere. But starting at the beginning is a great idea because you just start to go, oh, it's a little different than what I've been reading before. It, you know, there's not a, look, we're not talking magic. We're talking about taking responsibility of the time and the energy to do the work we have to do for ourselves, for our families, for our relationships. And if we do that, we'll be better off than if we don't do it. That's Absolutely. the way I look at it. Absolutely. I always say, find your own truth. And you don't do it by just going on the internet and leaving nasty comments to other people. No. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much. Of course, we're going to follow up with you because we always have so many questions. And thank you for the clarity today. I think a lot of people are going to be pretty happy with the answers that they got. I hope so. And uh, as you said, other questions and challenges, fine. And use theyflyblog.com has search engine. It also links to theyfly.com, another website of mine, a couple hundred articles there. So 
go feast on that and think it through. And also check Michael out on Facebook too, because you publish a lot of videos and information on, on there, right? What about Twitter? Do you do the same on X? Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I've got those things going on. Yes. Okay, good. We'll we'll make sure we link to them. I'll make sure we, we link to them. Thank you, Michael. I will be in touch, of course, for another one of these. I always thoroughly enjoy them. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Again, anybody have comments, always leave them in the description below and Michael will definitely answer them for you. Thanks, everyone.